five-man death ball they've got going on does look pretty scary. Obviously, uh, they can take objectives pretty darn fast. It's, it's a position three nature's profit here with mind control, so he should be pretty farmed. Expect him to be pretty active, trying to set up plays all over the place. Jihad death profit, I'd say similar. Now, thoughts about this uh, Elder Titan. We have not seen the GH eat as much as a lot of the other fours. Do you like it here? Yeah, it was picked into the Oracle. Uh, so that, that can be a little bit annoying, but uh, I always think lane the pressure dispel. when I see this hero. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, because of the uh, the idea of just like saving people from the delayed stuns. It's, it's like versus Kunk or whatever, same idea, but uh, lane pressure is always good with this hero, right? If you can get yourself a good matchup. I'm assuming he does not want to be anywhere near uh, this Monkey King's lane, though. That does not seem like a very fun time. Monkey King, also an interesting choice. Always curious about the item bad. build. Will it be the Aghanim's trap? Let's have this discussion again, buddy. What do you think? Call it now. Uh, will it be the Aghanim's this game? First item. That's what I'm talking about. I think he'll probably like, like treads eggs or whatever. Yeah, treads eggs. Is that the build? That's. He's just blended in as a tree here, by the way. This is uh, pretty incognito. Yes, yeah, he's... Nothing uh, sus going on here. Oh, now the banana. Yeah. That one sticks out a little bit more. <laughs> the battle you haven't seen the uh, I kind of... I kind of think not not eggs first. I feel like there's just too much fighting. I mean, maybe he'll get away with it, but I don't know if he'll be able to. It's a good question. To me, to me it sure. seems like they want to defend these tier one towers and just every little bit feels like it'll help. But at the same time, I also agree that Monkey King kind of just has garbage item builds right now. Yeah. So I don't really have a much better option other than like drums into, and I don't want to go for like defusal or echo or anything because it's just going to slow you down yeah. too. Like so, blade, I guess, could be situational, but now that Silver Edge has an echo component, it just doesn't feel that good. The um, pacing is just a little bit tough, right? Yeah, and from the off lane too. Might not be able to expect the, the optimal farm condition. All right, so we're we talking about the the dispel for like the you know the saving dispel and obviously the dispel on the um, the astral spirit buff. Ever since that got changed, and so like, what does GH really get to do here? Not, not much. I don't know. This looks like a really tough matchup. I mean, he can kind of do these little trades. You can still play around the spirit this way. Looks like they, might <laughs> they both. I love. Has been okay. I love how Insania is killing his courier while killed. also losing his own though. It's like that tunnel vision of oh guys, I got his courier as yours is running in the same course of danger. I, I don't know. I, I've, I've been there. There's something about just everybody having a courier. It it being a low cooldown death. It doesn't feel like it's worth the bandwidth to process. I don't know. I, I got nothing, bud. So level one Fortune's End is a 15 second cooldown. Spirit is 23 at its lowest is a 17 second cooldown. Uh, it has a lower mana cost, but the Oracle will happily just like fairy stuff out. So I don't really see a window where GH gets to ever actually use the spirit damage. I don't yeah, it's gone so. immediately there. Thania is on it. It's a, a comfort pick and a counter pick, so. Maybe GH can just uh, rely on stacking. I mean, isn't that one of the other benefits of the spirit that, uh, you know, Elder Titan's a good stacker? So. I mean, there's right definitely the mid game fights, he'll still get to do his stuff. That I'm not as concerned oh, about, yeah. you know. Their five uh, minutes still great. It's just this first, what, 10, 15 minute window is not amazing. Um, also, mid lane, we should uh, talk about this here. The Prophet went mid to match up against this Arc Warden. Yeah, they're just uh, just doing their thing. He can't really do anything versus the Treants. The Treants are very good versus Arc Warden, right? You think about all the different benefits they have versus the Arc Warden's annoying stuff, like the Flux and the Spark Wraith and everything. So it just kind of answers a lot of the problems. Yeah. And I'm sure my control's okay with it. He gets a little more space, gets all that farm mid. Winning the matchup right now. More importantly, I think it's... Uh... Like, DP just needs six if she has someone else who's really strong. That's why the offline DP works in the first place, right? Like, mid DP, sure, she gets levels and gold and XP, and she's like level eight or nine forcing a tower, and she can be the forefront. But if she's just level six and MC TP's in, and he's like level eight or whatever and has a lot of items, then he can be that little bit of a buffer with himself in the trance to really uh, create a good opportunity on the early game pushes. But check this play from Nigma, buddy. Kuro comes bottom, realizing that he could do a little more in this lane. Well, that's the stun onto Koikpa. Yeah. Yeah, Koikpa tried to dodge the snake with the uh, the mischief, but he just missed it. Dyer's top tower. So is still not an easy lane, right? Insania down here has a lot of sustain. Soon to hit that level three breakpoint we're always talking about. I kind of wonder if they'll swap. 
But GH's TP is back up already, so it doesn't really work. Because he TP'd home to, to heal and just ran top, so. And how's Boxy doing up here? Playing the Bloodseeker safe lane. I get tiny. Both comfort picks. Yeah, they uh, they went for the Bloodseeker again, huh? Yeah. I mean, he's a guaranteed lane win. That's obviously one of his big strengths right now. Yeah, well, and it's also an adaptation because they've switched it up. It was the Boxy Invoker last game. For sure. For Blood Seeker. So it is a little different. First. Oh, nice job, Tiger. Man, I did not think he was going to stay in that without the toss back. But he kept his static for the bonus damage and uh, gets the first blood on Tiny. Excellent hero to get first blood on. MC gets that four minute rune, uh, double damage. Pretty expected against the Nature's Prophet, like you said. Answers the Arc Warden's threats for the most part, so. The alien will get no room. Taiga, he lurked. Now he's just running from the mid. Cool. MC, yeah, he's in deep here. Insania TPs, and now this three on one, it's going to be a bit much. They get a freebie there. Taiga taking credit. And Weeha can't punish Boxy because he's a Bloodseeker, and they can't really punish Clickfa either. So kind of independent cores on the side there. Wish fulfilled. Girl will get the bounty uh, down the bottom lane, though. So it's going to be three for one. Going the way Enigma, so nice bonus for them. Yep. Miracle. Sustains against Koikba. Taking a lot of pressure from this Monkey King, but one of the better heroes to deal uh, with. Insania, though. Up top, it's Insania. By up top, I mean in the lane here. Mind control on his way back. Might still fall to the Koikster. There's that boundless strike. Still pretty beefy. Needs a little more. Not going to get it. Instead, there's a stun the other way. There's the Sprout. Still slows him down. Some body blocks with the Ents, and the Koikster's dead. Yeah. Thought he had it when he got the uh, the dodge on the, the snake again. I noticed that's twice now where he's dodged the snake, but you still lose the raindrop charge. It's kind of funny. Yeah, weird how that works. I guess Raindrop's not calibrated around this random extra skill that is unique to Monkey King known as Mischief. Wow, how dare they? Radiant structures are for I can't believe how long it was allowed to be so broken. Yeah, Mischief is just a weird exception. Like, Willow, I feel like we've all given a pass at this point. She's got two ultimates. It just, it, it makes the hero, she needs it, whatever. Feels calibrated, right? Mischief just still seems odd. Like, okay, cool. Jumps down, yeah. though, onto Miracle, just uh, driving back with Insania coming through. But it looks like they don't Out think it's now. quite enough damage. Could be a little scary. Nice stun, but Koikba still finds the kill. Mind Control's here, gonna try to clean things. Oh, uh, do you know how much that Wrath of Nature did to uh, Monkey, by the way? Uh, please hit me with the numbers. Uh, 486 damage. <laughs> just your standard level 6 ultimate, guys. Level six, six minutes in. Uh, so what is that, like a final hit or something on this thing? I mean, that's got to be must have been close. Damage. Oh, yeah, that's one of the last but, two, but that's, I mean, that's brutal. Perfect MC. You're in mid lane. You cast this global spell starting at top lane. Then you TP bottom to right click them while they're getting crushed by the global chaos. It's uh, is you see Tiger here? Look how sneaky he's being. What's this devil up to? You get a ward down? Okay. He's getting the uh, the stacks here. No, he doesn't have a ward. Oh, yeah, they do. Look at Plateau, baby. Oh, no, I mean, like, on him. I thought you meant, like, place another one, sorry. Okay. Like, to, to block or whatever. But, yeah, no, they're just going to keep an eye on it. That's good. I mean, Miracle, Deusa, they, uh, of course it's Liquid. They know the value. He, he wants to come leech that XP, I think. Get over there, bud. Can't invade and try to do anything to take this, but how you will start getting closer to level 5, it looks like. Okay, leeches a little bit. And they're pinging him. Quite a oh, few actually, that was... Across Enigma heroes. Yeah, that was Boxy pinging. Oh, damn. GH found their ward. I thought maybe they were trying to sell it by blood the camp after, but... Uh, Boxy will return to the lane, and it's pushing in where we have just gonna capture the tower, but MC actually threatens a TP in behind with GH coming. Radiant Oscar. Boxy goes for the TP, and not gonna make it. GH has the sleep. Hmm. Ugh. Tough TP against the Elder Titan. 
Got a pretty good window there to get yeah, the stomp off. I'm not sure why... Why did he go for that when he quelling blade? I guess he just didn't Dyer's think he could get away. Thought the body locks would be too much. Too slow. I guess he'd just get run down by the spirit anyway if he knew the ET was there. So he was just hoping to beat up the sleep. But this is the speed that we were very worried about. Liquid coming off a very rough match versus Secret. It cannot feel good jumping right back into another game that looks eerily similar because they also have a potentially very fast, quick draft that's going to take your towers a little earlier than you'd like. They need to try to make something happen to buy time so this doesn't turn into like an Arc Warden Alchemist kind of game where you've got this one guy that's the vacuum cleaner on your limited part of the map. Up top now, Taiga. He's going to be initiated on, but saved so far by Insania. Only level four. No false promise for the full reset, but DP, no ulti either. Some stick charges, what? mind control. On the hunt is now Monkey King comes in. It's a four on two. Reinforcements coming now from Kuro, but this is still going to be Liquid's fight, I think. They lose Insania first, but now Mind Control goes down, and we also going to fall inside of the tree line. Another tick gets ticked off. Those infused raindrops. Now Kuro. They've got vision on the OBS, too, so they see him with the jump down. Oh, there it is. Monkey King looking for the spring. Blood right as well, and that should be a dead vengeful spirit. No Dyer's boundless strike, but the toss. See you later, Venge. Big stuff for Liquid. And there you go. That's exactly what they needed. That's what we talked about uh, them needing last time, was like actual punish when they take towers like that and then try yeah. and push right after. Because that's something they just could not do in the previous match versus Secret. Now they're actually going to find it because of the high mobility they have on the, uh, the Monkey King and the Bloodseeker. And Sane, you're going to need some mobility here, though. Well, he's got some friends. Maybe it was a great bait. Trent, mind control in deep. And one place you don't want to be against the Ark Warden is alone in the jungle with nothing else around. Now, I don't know if you know this, Trent, but Flux is a really weird spell. I fear many people watching don't understand how it works. It doesn't do anything if somebody is near you. But if you're by yourself, oh, buddy, it does everything. You're slow. You're taking damage. It's pretty unfun. And, and there's two of them. A two Oh, my goodness, because there's two Arc Wardens, perhaps? Uh-huh. That's they, some wild stuff, stack. man. So you can have two Fluxes on you at once, and at level four, that's a 50% movement speed. So, uh, yeah, there's no running from the Arc Warden if you're alone like that. We got double level five supports coming through, but it's two supports that don't rely on their six for the aggression. And TP's coming out. They want to get a second kill right on the MC and kind of end his game, I think. That would be big. He is trying to rush Orchid, and this could still be punished. Now, they know the supports were smoked because he sentried their OBS and Bloodseeker didn't have a sentry. That's why Crow's playing so far back here. They can find the opening. Boxy starting to move in down bottom. Does have that rupture available. Cuts through the trees. Mind control. Radiance bottom. I think he's getting out of this one. Rupture comes out, as does the silence. Oh, man, this was... Nice. Okay, nice toss. Dyer's That'll ensure some damage as Taiga attack. does trade his life for it, though. Big reaction out of Enigma. Insania, false promise. Probably not going to waste it here, and he won't. This goes the other way to ensure survival onto Boxy, and they trade a one for two, but two supports for that mid profit. And a lot of TPs. Uh, I call it pretty even in the end. Uh, it looks like Boxy going for a double stack here. Does the blood rate on the top camp and then pulls down on the ancients. Okay. Oh, he's been practicing, I see, Boxy. Yeah, nice, there. nice. Good Beat timing. All right. I like that. They got to have practice sessions in the uh, the game lobbies or something. The, <laughs> the numbers these guys are pumping out. I think last game they had 19 stacks to Secrets 8 or something. Is, is that how Liquid warms up? They just get into the practice lobby and uh, start stacking up the jungle? It's like, yeah. yeah. They have little montages to it, too. <laughs> that would be pretty dank, actually. That's that's the kind of content Dyer's we need in Dota for the pubs. Attack. Yeah, instead, Team Liquid just hire Tsunami to do stuff. Like, what are they even doing? I don't understand. Uh, Quikebo looking to push out that top lane. Actually, waiting to see if someone else wants to push out that top lane to be more accurate. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Uh, classic stuff, though, on the Deucer. I feel like we haven't really talked about Miracle too much, but he's just going for a Manta, Dragon Lance, MKB, good mix of stats and damage, farming up a storm. Outpacing the Arc Warden so far. Arc did go Midas first, but hasn't really kicked in completely yet. That level one Tempest double is still pretty rough. 
I think we can save the defense uh, up top, though, and uh, in the plays at bottom, as we will lose Foxy after getting his Athos. He can't really find a play, unfortunately. But uh, things looking at it, good enough for Liquid that uh, the eggs is the way to go for Koikva. Didn't uh, it's not like they've lost like three tier ones by now, right? You know, you're yeah. still holding the mid tier one, obviously the most important one. So keeping item. some map control, and yeah, the eggs just does a lot in the game right now. There you go. Atos and Ags. Just uh, sticking with the classics here. Enigma, they're moving into enemy territory. They stack the Dire Ancients here. Or, well, no, sorry. They find the stack, I meant to say. And now, uh, thinking about killing it. Thinking about maybe stacking about. it. You might have been right, to be honest. <laughs> Almost. That was close. Uh, Kuro lets it go. <laughs> are scanning. Monkey King kind of feels like Wind Ranger these days, man. Like the, uh, the item syndrome. Like all, one more item every yeah. time. I think that's why... It just feels like no other item is good. Like, there's just specific items that work. There's some that don't. And that I mean, those and are just the ones you now, want. now, I mean, what do you do next? Is it just a BKB basher? Taiga up top? Get caught out. You know, like, and even this game, BKB against DP and Medusa, it feels pretty bad, but... I don't know, the hero just has amazing skills, so I, I get why he you still want to pick him. Like, he's really good laning matchups, and... He is one of the, the longest reaching initiators when it comes to, uh, like, you know, scaling cores uh, outside of the spirits. Radiance bottom tower is under Maybe you just go like a Bissell AC after the egg. Weeha mid, pops the ult. Now they go in on the boxy. Of course, there is a save maybe available. No, the swap. The Oracle was silenced, couldn't get off the false promise, so that'll be Boxy down first. But now the escape, maybe a rehash here, or a reuse rather, from Nigma. They get Taiga, and the Tempest double will also get popped, so two and a half heroes dead. Uh oh, Shades of previous game. Gotta get those items online, Quick was gonna rush into this Agonims. I mean, again, as you're kind of saying, it's not really gonna change that much instantly, but... It's uh, the stepping stones towards uh, having some way to uh, contest the side of Enigma. I'm sure they know the next exorcism is going directly into the Roche pit, and that's only a minute away. This is a scary time, though. On the cusp of some big breakpoints, Mind Control now has the Orchid. That's certainly scary. Uh, Manta style on Dusa, so she's powering up. And DP not far away from the blink. 500 gold, and she'll have a lot more catch. Also, uh, level actually one. moving in down bottom with a swap play, swapping there to sleep. Is. Look at this setup. Now, can they actually follow it up? Mischief not quite there, and the stun connects to a kill. Beautifully done. That's a ganking Venge Medusa ET. That, that's not what you expect. No, but that's the thing. When Medusa's farmed like this, she can do it. Now, mind control. He'll get tossed back. They've got that combo. Beautiful there. Tiger does have to pay with his life. Dyer's current. They get a big kill on a core. Now Miracle charging in. Does have a stone gaze, but rooted up barely sidestep with silence. Great play. Get in onto Mickey. They found the real warden and they want to seize the moment. They're gonna walk into the bubble. Does get saved by Insania. Potential. No, he's out. No interrupt. Mark Warden's gonna live, and now how far Ladies are they gonna dive? Foxy, he's low, finished off by a Crypt Swarm, but Weeha stuck on the high ground. He might not have a retreat plan. Yes, oh, Kuro! It's Kuro. He's got the first class ticket. The train going home, he'll be the sacrificial lamb that pays his life to keep his carry alive. Taiga, nah, Taiga got him in the back line, though. <laughs> oh, he did, he still got the kill. Oh, no. Yeah, he fell to the other three heroes, but at least he cleaned something up. But still, I mean, you're losing a lot on the side of Liquid. Like, maybe you get the gold wins in that engagement, but you're going back to these cores all farming. I mean, it's it's something. The fact that the Arc Warden lived there is big. BOT's now up on Mickey. I think this is the moment also where Arc Warden starts to power up a bit, Trent. He can really start to split push the double. Kind of feels like a hero now instead of just this assistant you got on the side. Yeah, you can maybe go for a, uh, a like a smoke play or something where then the, the yeah. clone bots is in and actually does a lot of damage. Uh, the like, fact they also force another engagement does draw the next Roche later because they're probably going to want exorcism for it, or at least they, they want to have all these options available when they go in. Right. They don't really have anything available to to significantly speed up Roche outside of the Venge. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess she does have the full medallion, though, so... To be fair, they don't really need much more. But the Dyer are also thinking the same thing. Look, it's scanning the Roche pit. They don't find anything. That's not going to force their hands into a uh, aggressive maneuver towards the Roche. Drums out on the Elder Titan. Hurt so, with the medallion. What ended up happening through all that is that they killed MC using the, the rupture toss combo. Mm -hmm. But then once they saw that inside Enigma, that's why they dove in so deep with Miracle and Weehaw. Because they, they're they pretty sure that Miracle only dies to that combo right now. And I think they're correct. Is now Koikfa chased down. Has Insania here. He's holding it. Lucky King's in big trouble, though. They get off a good silence. A silence. Profit, still no... Oh, oh my gosh! Save him. Koikfa mischief into the false promise. It's mind control that goes down. We as well. Two dead on Enigma. Double might even survive as now they're looking to focus their efforts on the I can't believe this. This Dusa doesn't have stone gaze. She's out of mana. It does get a big boost there, but still, can she make this stand? The raid boss, the Gorgon, she's actually doing it. The buybacks now for mind control. They're gonna turn on to the warden. Nigma, they not only survive, but they overwhelm the likes of Liquid. Yes, it costs the buyback, but one that's well worth it in the nature's profit. They couldn't touch her. She just stood there. That, <laughs> she made it look so simple. 7,000 damage. Oh, how did she so, get all that mana back? That, uh, that first snake? Must uh, yeah, it would have been a snake. Oh, that was a full mana bar. That completely saved her. Yeah, that was crazy. That was like... The, the way that that whole fight started, too, with the silence on Insania, and he just barely, like, there was a mischief dodge by Koikfa on a right click that saved his life, which then gave him the time to, to get False Promise after that, which is where the ultimate came out and they actually started, you know, and that yeah. created the chase down for Enigma, got the kills on Weehaw and MC, but in the end, Miracle was just too much there, and it only gets worse now with all that gold funnel in the Medusa and Aegis coming out for them. They're in big trouble. Forward, two steps back. Big plays there, but now they've got to fight into Aegis, and like we said, the gap is growing between Arc Warden and Dusa. Yolnir up next, but I don't know if that's going to be much of a game changer. Boxy in the meantime, caught at the top tier two. Yeah, no false promise in there, 10 seconds, so he was just done for. And now they're in full split push mode, and... Yeah, Koikfa had the uh, the Deso queued up, but now he's switching over to the uh, Diffusal, just seeing how ridiculous this Medusa is. Radiant's bottom tower is under. And yeah, I don't really blame him. After talking to Lacoste, I think it feels pretty bad Dyer's to have to buy mana burn against Medusa. Generally, you just want damage to do it for you. I guess Diffusal's not too bad on the Monkey King overall, but well, it's really good because the way it stacks with the clones and stuff, right? Yes. So everything stacks on the clones now except Echo Sync. Basher still works, right? Or no? No, no, no. Basher's the one that doesn't work. Is under attack. Well, Echo Saber also does. But you get the movement speed slow from the Echo Saber still. Oh, okay. So it like half works. Yeah, gotcha. Oh, yeah, I remember when the Basher worked. That was really busted. Monkey King would be relevant as hell if Basher worked. Well, that was why support worked, Dyer's right? Top top is yeah. under attack. Um, the Echo yeah. Saber... The Echo Saber should work, too. I don't see... I don't know why that wouldn't. I thought... Wasn't that a patch note? Didn't they change that specifically to, to get Monkey King? Don't you remember that? Oh, the clone thing. You're right. Yeah, you're right. I do remember that. I was thinking, like, maybe they had reverted it back and you just were big brain. No, no, no. I, I remember the exact one you're talking about. Yeah. I remember I was laughing. <laughs> that was the most <laughs> random change. Like, Echo Saber now only works on real heroes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a recent patch. You're right. So, part of his big time item. Yeah, so now the Caught slow. It almost looked like a real bumbo there. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah, so the slow doesn't work anymore. That's well, kind of comical. Speaking of Bobo, Monkey King, he's down. The MK does not have a buyback, and he's dead for 50. Swap from Kuro. That's going to catch Taiga. That's going to make it a twofer. Now Boxy on the run, but Wee is there. Another swap. Nowhere for this Bloodseeker to go. The race car is running out of gas, and now he's got a flat tire. That's three sideline. Things looking grim for Liquid. Again, falling apart pretty quickly here only 23 minutes in and a staggering lead for Nigma. yeah it's just a bit too similar isn't it now nah, still two and a half minutes remaining the age is still sat up here on miracle and there it goes the ghosts 
Go. They run out and... Yeah. Fabulous. The Death Prophet. It's, uh, it's rough to see someone just get kind of crushed like that two games in a row in best of ones. Yeah. I mean... But they just were not able to, uh, obviously win a lot of these fights. I mean, it's they so were, close on that bottom one, too. They were well fought, and both games had this similar storyline. Like, the whole this thought is maybe the final fight here. Taiga getting repelled, looking for a catch, but doesn't find it. Top lane of Barracks falling quickly. Sigma, though, they will actually respect this. They don't want to get wiped here. Miracle ruptured. Silence. Stands his ground, though. Doesn't really need to move. Morgan just a turret at this point as Taiga dies and buys back. Insania will follow suit. Also back in the game. Now a 7v5. Kuro, he's going to swap in and die so they get off a stone gaze. Big time silence with MC throwing in right clicks in the back. There's Aegis. Medusa, another great Aegis carrier. And a buyback from Kuro. He'll try to TP in. Looks like Nigma want to end this now. We repelled. But Miracle pressing forward, and that's the triple kill now. Boxy also low, looks like he'll live, but no Arc Warden, no Monkey King. I don't know how they can hold this. That's Taiga in the back. Guys, we're going to get three best of ones done in the time of one uh, one game for many of our other series throughout this tournament. Yeah. What is that, 23 minutes, and now we're sitting at 25 minutes as Liquid are simply herded into the well. They're getting poured in there. Yeah, but... Uh, what I was going to say is both these games have followed this kind of trajectory where the opposition against Liquid just played really good clean Dota. Just slightly better movements, slightly better stacking, very efficient gameplay, a clear strategy that was just executed a little bit better. It kind of looked like Liquid were uh, struggling to initiate a lot of fights, too. They, they kind of felt like they were just like throwing rocks at cars or something. They, they just kind of like <laughs> bounce off and that's it. You know, that, that's what every fight looked like. Throwing rocks at cards. They, they needed to smash right through the window or something, you know? They needed some really precise throws here. And uh, they, they were just hitting hubcaps. The, uh, really clean itemization from Nigma as well. You know, look at MC. Orchid straight into BKB. No messing around. Horse Staff Drum on the Elder Titan. Great utility. Blink, Yules, BKB on Weeha. It's wow. just perfect itemization, you know? Simple, stuff. thankfully. No mistakes. Thankfully, we can drag this game for another 25 minutes, guys. Don't let me just say it's over, because there's an arc for it. So, right, so buddy, let's estimate the win percent. Did you cheat already? What do you no, think? I haven't let's looked. Go to plus save. I'm, I'm, I'm going with like a good 98. I'm going, I was going to say 97. Okay. What I, do we got? I, I think they like our Jordan, <laughs> but do 99. Whoa. <laughs> You got price uh, invited, buddy. Sorry, Deuce had tossed in, though. Yeah, can she get off this stone gaze? She does. Out of mana now, four staff back. They get a bit of a reset. Weeha, low. Does oh, he's ruptured now. The MK ult. Can he survive? Haste rune. Yeah, that'll get countered by the rupture pretty darn quick, but Koikpa destroyed. Back line. Where did he go? KB, Insania is down. Weeha does fall, but it takes three of them to finish him off. Bad looking fight for Liquid. No buybacks available on their dead. Did you see that? Was he waved and solar crested there? Because he just took 900 damage. That was gross. Well, bye bye, Monkey King. Uh, I mean, there was also a DD on Miracle, to be fair, so I mean, that, that's why it all happened, but yeah, that's, a, that's a big part. Uh, Mick A swapped out, looking for the MKB, not going to save it. And I think this one's going to be GG, Trent. They're going to wrap this up like a little Christmas present. Sorry, Liquid. You're going to have to play in the play-in to decide if you're upper bracket or lower bracket. Nigma one step closer. Hey, Boxy's busy right now, all right? You let him get his kill on GH. All right. He's, uh, yep, he's getting snowballed now, though. Numerical, Frosty the Snowman. That Quake was coming. Hey, Boxy is pulling him pretty far out, but Quake, he gets dropped pretty much immediately, dead again. Miracle, beyond godlike, I believe. Uh, just one death here, not quite deathless. But Weeha gets some vengeance as Liquid desperately makes the final hold. They're resilient, these Liquid boys. They're going to hang in as long as they can. But now, I think, Trent, they're going to wrap this up like a nice little Christmas. <laughs> I think Liquid are just trying to bait them into buying the, the Rapier, right? They're just trying to irritate them enough that they go for it. Stone Gaze, Boxy dead. 
and smack the throne we will. Nick A doing the arc. Ah, uh, yes, yes, good, good. How do you like it, Nigma? Here we go. They know this well. MKB does not work on building. Why? Why? Is under attack. Well, it doesn't matter because there's not 100% upside. So, oh, wait. Oh, we get another round. Trent, one to the, more. To the well. No boxy. It's a 5v4. The final fight indeed. We've teased it. They're like a band that's done their farewell tour multiple times, but now the throne, it will fall. It's too much. Liquid are overwhelmed, and Nygma takes...